settle down. Oh, spew, ew, 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 ruff, 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 and throwing up buying peas. Dogs that fart and pals that smart and weaving shed disease. Oh, spew, ew, 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 ruff, 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 get up them benign hills. Black pudding and tripe and bums at your wife and dark satanic mill. Oh, yeah, thanks, you, buddy. You seem an enthusiastic audience. Yeah, I can tell you've not just wandered in out of morbid curiosity. I know, I know. You've come along to see what makes me squidgy and bendy. <laughs> yeah, no secret, I've got test tube parents. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's a green world. Yeah, like the shirt. Free with unleaded petrol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's all modern technology here tonight. See that there, that little black thing? Eh? Bet you thought that was a tie when I walked on there. Eh? <laughs> it's a mic. Yeah, and you can get up to all kind of tricks with one of these, you know. The thing is, when you were one of these, you, 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 you've, got, you've got to check it out before the show, right? And I, I always check this out before the show by talking through it to John, my sound engineer. You've probably seen him sitting by the mixing desk out there. And uh, <coughs> from the dressing room to the stage, as I'm talking to John through it, he picks it up on the cans, you see. A couple of weeks ago, working in a big sports centre, right? No toilets in the dressing room. And I'm coming down, I call in the public gents, right? I squeeze between these guys, just going to game after a game of squash. Get in between them. I head straight for the toilets, go straight in the middle cubicle. The other two were occupied. And I'm in there for a while. And I forget where I am for a minute. And I'm going, is that all right, John? <laughs> am I coming through? <laughs> Hang on, I'll put it up a bit. Yeah, yeah if, you, if you think I look a bit vacant, that's because I've not recovered from a daughter's birthday party. You know what kids are like? She invited all the friends round, about 70 of them. <laughs> With them inviting the gremlins for a midnight snack, you know. <laughs> and they're blowing the nose on the curtain. <laughs> Squelching jelly in the carpet. <laughs> Even super glued the poor cat to the stereo turntable. <laughs> Turn it up to 78, you know. Meow, <laughs> meow. My wife said, Come on, Phil, I'm sure you can think of a good part again. I said, I can. I'll go to the pub and you lot have got to guess what time I'm going to come back. <laughs> Kid, don't get me wrong, I hate them. <laughs> yeah, and some of the tricks they get up to these days, eh? Peeing through letter boxes and asking how far it went. <laughs> Knocking policemen's helmets off sometimes with a copper's head still in them. Yeah. Well, there's some, some kids now, you've probably seen them yourself, they're actually riding down the canal towpath on a little motorbike. <laughs> knocking all the fishermen in as they're going along. <laughs> that serves them right, bunch of prats sat in a line. They breed all their own, their own maggots, these fellas, you know. Yeah. 
take tuna fish sandwiches along. You know, some of the stars go fishing. George Melly is always standing in the middle of the river. Red and green check weight is on. Morph tie, big pink hat full of flies. Yes, the trout can see me from my house. <laughs> but I don't care because I'm jazzy fishing. <laughs> fishing for the one that got away from me. I'm going to catch you, baby. <laughs> if you will only nibble on my world. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you what, I'm always trying to throw fishermen. I've done this a lot, you know. You can do it yourselves. Yeah, put them right off the sport. What you do, I'll explain it to you. Supposing you're the fisherman on that bank, right? The canal's there. You get on the other bank and you do the elongated arm routine. This really throws them. You sort of go like this. might seem pretty obvious, but I'll tell you anyway. The more television a person does, the more they get seen. Out and about, of course, you know, in the high street or whatever. And uh, the recognition, in fact, it gets stronger and stronger all the time. But it doesn't bother me because me and my tour manager, we play a little game called Spot the Spotter. It's good. That's another one, Steve. Where, where, over there, over there. Where, over there, over there. Groceries all over the floor, just walked into a lamppost. Oh, no. <laughs> And I'll get guys actually standing at the side of me in the gents, would you believe? Yeah. They'll stand, I'll not do the hands routine, but they stand there. <laughs> For a while, and then they go. <laughs> go on, pull us a face. <laughs> you look a lot bigger on telly. Go on, pull a face. Go on. Get it pulled. <laughs> Go on, do that creature from the swamp thing, whatever it is. I can't believe do it. You do it. Go on. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Angela, get in here and fetch your camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of people think that, uh, yeah, show business is okay and that, but it's very depressing. I get depressed sometimes. Into the depths of despair, only a couple of weeks ago, I phoned a friend up in Birmingham. He said, Oh, hello, Phil. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Are you really, mate? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you feel like that, three's no good. You've got to take the entire bottle. Me? Oh, you know, just relaxing. Just reading through a film script with Sean Conley and Sir John Gielgud. It's called Raiders of the Sunshine Rest Home. <laughs> Get this right. <laughs> Sean's playing the part of Sir John's father. <laughs> what? What? Are you really? No, listen, mate. Listen. Put the kitchen knife down. Put the kitchen knife down. Don't be stupid. Sean, Sean, Sean. It's Phil Cool. He's a bit depressed. Gonna top himself. Have a, have a kind word, quick. Hello there, Bendy. <laughs> I saw an impression of me on TV. <laughs> it was crap. <laughs> I don't think you quite got the laugh right. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know, Ryan. I don't know about uh, People think uh, your business is it's all fun, you know, traveling around different town every night sleeping around in different hotels. And I have been asked the question from time to time, you know, Phil, do you ever, do you ever get any? <laughs> no, I don't want to get But that's okay, I've had my moments in the past. Yeah, I've had my moments. 
Yeah, I was all right to run the little devil at one point in time. I tell you, for my own good, I went on a voluntary course of chemical castration. <laughs> Carlsberg special, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And in the days of yesteryear, I used to sort of nonchalantly glide onto the dance floor, kind of use the power of impressionism to sort of chat women up, you know. I'd sort of smooch around for a while and then kind of go... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Gorgeous. Could I have this last waltz? <laughs> oh, I see. I couldn't even have the first one. <laughs> Ain't the women not like that sort of thing? <laughs> I mean, do they not go for people like Donald Pleasant? <laughs> okay, sweetie, let's twist. But impressionists, you know, and me, uh, you know, get people inquiring into how it's done. And you can't tell people how it's done. I mean, each, each character is different. I mean, for instance, when I went after the Pope, um, metaphorically speaking, of course, <laughs> I noticed that he got that little squidgy face. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, little squidgy face, squidge, squid. Yes. And uh, I noticed that he got, to, got all the other things as well. And when you he, when he, when he, when he sorted out his little squidgy face and his persona, then you've got to visualise him in various situations, like sitting on the bog, perhaps. I don't know. Heavy for a little Labrador, I suspect. <laughs> you who, whoever you are out there, could you find the kindness in your heart to slip me a length of Iser under the door? I certainly could not! <laughs> Use a cardboard tube! The, the, the impression is second best tool. These are pearl glasses. You can do all sorts of tricks with these. Oh, let's take a look at the weather, shall we? <laughs> well, as you can see, as usual, there is no weather whatsoever in Southern Ireland. <laughs> and, and anyone living in these surrounding blue areas will find it extremely wet. Good evening. Welcome once again to Question Time, where our panel of non-entities attempt to evade questions put to them by our uninvited vegetables. <laughs> On my extreme right, we have Sir Keith Joseph, a, a man who always seems to me to adopt the expression of a person whose finger has just gone through the toilet paper. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and under the table we have Willie Whitelaw. Yes, hang on, Willie, I've got a doggy bag for you. There. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Robin. I do appreciate the nice bit of whistle, the odd lamb chop, and the nice bit of gravy. It's absolutely delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and on my, on my immediate right we have Sir Geoffrey Howe, a man who wouldn't say boo to a goose. Probably wouldn't say no to a goose either. <laughs> and on my left, sitting safely behind a sheet of perspex, Roy Hattersley. <laughs> and under the table, we have the leader of the NUM, a Mr. Arthur Scargill. I think Arthur wants to come out from under the table. 
Come on, Arthur, speak your piece. I'll say this. <laughs> to all you people who say you can see through me, just let me make myself perfectly clear. Helmets <laughs> off, lads. Bit of respect. Power father, the white Still in the minds of every true trade unionist. Hallowed marks be thy name, thy commune come, thou will be done in West, as it is inevitable. <laughs> give us fur pay, our daily red, and forgive us our best pickets, as we won't forgive them that press by us against us. Now leave this not as a temptation, the lettuce grabs off lightly. <laughs> but deliver us from patriotism, for that is the commune and the power. Not the Tories, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur Scargill. Mr. Scargill seems to have struck a nerve here tonight. And finally, on my extreme left, we have Neil Kinnett. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Kinnock, a man who has just given up his daytime job to concentrate on leading the Labour Party more effectively. Although I must say, I preferred him as Ronald McDonald. But I must say, Mr. Kinnock's power of speech-making is getting stronger and stronger, as he seems to be able to get passionate about the slightest thing. kids, not my kids, not anyone else's kids. <laughs> A treat. <laughs> full. Not half full, not two-thirds full, but completely, totally, unequivocally full <laughs> of Cadbury goodness. <laughs> A finger of fudge is all you need to give your kids the treat! Thank you! <laughs> Aye, we don't like using too many props. But I must say, the odd bit of her just round the head there. Just does add that special bit, you know. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hey, listen, Ed, listen. <laughs> Brace yourselves. I'm gonna swear. Gosh. Well, of course, you sussed it. I'm not really Cliff. Um, who am I? Well, you've probably seen me on uh, Saturday Superstore. Um, <laughs> top of the pops. <laughs> Answers on the postcard, please, to uh, the Mike Reed Identity Crisis. <laughs> oh, nice to have a couple of ones on the show, don't you think so? Nice to have a couple of ones on the show, don't you Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to stop saying ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, but well, I can't, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever wondered, ladies and gentlemen, why we comedians never stop for a rest? No breaks, no commas, no abbreviations. That's because we are frightened. We are frightened of silence. We are frightened that you will not laugh at what we say because what we say is not funny, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we keep going on long time, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you see the FDI, I'm going to explain, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to explain, ladies and gentlemen. in here tonight. Ah, oh, chat shows. I'm a bit, uh, nobody's ever you know, seen me on a chat show yet, that's because I've not done any. <laughs> I've got a good reason for that. I'm scared to death of somebody getting my name wrong. It's happened before. Play one place is Phil Tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I did another gig. It's Phil Stool. <laughs> yeah, that was a nurse's dance, I think. I'm really scared of it because, I mean, there's a classic story of the, uh, of the interviewer uh, interviewing a very famous actress, I'll not tell you her name, uh, <coughs> except that her maiden name, uh, before she made it in show business, was Fluck. <laughs> yeah. And halfway through the interview, the interviewer said, uh, it must have been very difficult uh, in your early career trying to make it with a name like Clunt. So I'm very worried. Yeah. yeah. Wogan's been on for me a couple of times. I thought, should I do Terry's programme? I thought, no, I better not really. All the things I said about Terry, what's he going to think? What's he going to say? <laughs> Wimbledon, wimble, tippy toe. <laughs> Shufty smile. Let me just say, if you ever get that Phil Cool on this show, so help me, it won't be his knee I'll be squeezing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's nice to be back after a couple of weeks' holidays, soaking up the old sun. Yeah. Don't go adjusting your sets, will you? I really am bright orange. <laughs> and let me just say, thanks to little Sue Lolly for doing such a, a good job when I was away. Yeah, but don't get too good now, will you, Sue? <laughs> yeah. Well, <clears throat> we've all heard the, the, the tales about all that space junk flying around up there in the atmosphere. Well, tonight we're going to use the power of satellite TV to go across to the United States of America, drop in on a few friends. Yeah. One who's just retired lately, united as well. How's things over in the States, on the ranch? And how is it that you're not president anymore? <laughs> I'm not president anymore? Search me. Fellow Americans, I'm sorry about the massive budget deficit. Whatever that means. <laughs> May I go for a piss? <laughs> My bag's full. <laughs> How the hell are you ever going to elect your president? I'll never know. I think we better forget about him. I think we already have. <laughs> yeah. But let's let's pop across instead and let's let's go to Dallas. How's things over in Dallas, old buddy? <laughs> I'm doing fine, Tell. <laughs> <coughs> well, so help me, I got so many bullet holes I can hardly hold my knicker no more. <laughs> Listen, do you realize there's a bendy-faced comedian over in England who reckons you walk like you flopped in your pants? <laughs> like a plot in my pants, huh? <laughs> Goddamn nerve. <laughs> what the hell's he know anyhow? <laughs> Plopped in my pants and you didn't. <laughs> Sly, honey, get in here. Sly, darling, what do you say? I walk like a plot to my pants? <laughs> you would have. Well, get me a fresh pack of snugglers. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, the reason I walk this way is no more than a hemorrhoid transplant. <laughs> Who the hell the donor is, I don't know. <laughs> Burns, perhaps. <laughs> well, Tell, I'd like to talk some more, but I feel a free frame coming on in a minute now. Don't miss it. Here it comes. <laughs> yeah, 
There's a cartoon, cartoon company uh, just been on, uh, wanted me to do the voice for a cartoon. Only one problem, it's Wicked Willie. <laughs> How the hell am I supposed to get into a character like that? Uh, I don't know. Method acting, perhaps. Yeah, but they've been on for me to do every silly advert from Round Tree's Fruit Pastels, you know. <laughs> to Humphrey Bogart advertising moisturised cleansing tissues. Forgive me for saying so, miss, but have you just dropped a wet one? <laughs> I like to be around when they're making some of these ads, you know. Especially those stop you in the street ads. There's one where this northern DJ stops this young lad in the street. And uh, the young lad stands with his back to the camera all the time. And the northern DJ says to him, Right, Spotty. <laughs> Must be horrible having a pulsating mass of puss for a face. <laughs> but you're going to try and clear yourself for a week, are you? No, 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 don't turn around to the camera yet, cock. People will see you haven't got any spots. <laughs> We're bloody stupid, don't we? Yeah. And then there's those can't buy them in the shops ads. This record cannot be bought in the shops, but can be exclusively yours for $49.99. Or make checks available to Sinatra Sings Shit. <laughs> And add those extra special moments to that candlelit dinner with songs like There is Klingons on the starboard bow Starboard bow Entertain your friends with numbers like Ooh wee chirpy chirpy cheap cheap chirpy chirpy cheap cheap chirp Sinatra sings shit. <laughs> Ooh, <God. laughs> Leap up and down and wave your knickers in the air. <laughs> yeah, I think they should try some new concepts for adverts, you know. I mean, it's about time perhaps McDonald's give Ronald the boot, you know. Why don't they get a new concept? How's about this one for him, right? <coughs> Dining at McDonald's actually increases your IQ level mm, because of a special ingredient known only to McDonald's. And so, after demolishing 15 Big Macs, 10 Mini Macs, 5 Micro Macs with cheese and onions and relish, another McDonald's satisfied Mac customer comes along to prove it by taking the mastermind general knowledge test. <coughs> um... <laughs> President Eisenhower had a nickname. What was it? <laughs> Correct.
complete the following. <laughs> According to American folklore, Doc Holliday's life was saved by his friend, Wyatt. Uh. Correct. <laughs> and finally, what is... <clears throat> I farted, so I'll finish. <laughs> the special ingredient in McDonald's. Ah, <laughs> 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 <sighs> uh, I was a bit late getting here tonight, sorry. But, uh, I knew I was late when I was traveling along as well. I thought Sodom. Why worry about time? I haven't even got a watch, you know. And the fact that I haven't got a watch means I can have a bit of fun, you know. Do this yourselves, yeah, on a bus station, railway station, or wherever. Get a biro and draw a watch on your wrist. <laughs> Fingers, numbers, strap, buckle, the whole bit, you know. Give yourself an expensive one. <laughs> and then you go over to someone and say, excuse me, um, have you got the right time, please? And they go, 3.15 precisely. There you go. Oh, mine stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 3.15, you say. I'll put mine a couple of minutes if you don't... A couple of, minute, couple of minutes fast if you don't mind. There you go. I always like mine a couple of minutes fast. And then, sure enough... Uh, more often than not, two times out of ten, perhaps. Someone will come up to you. Yeah. A couple of minutes later, and say, Excuse me, have you got the right time, please? <laughs> Three seventeen, look. <laughs> what kind of a loony draws a watch on his wrist with a bar out? And the payoff comes when he wanders over to the guy you just asked before. He said, Excuse me, have you got the right time, please? 317 precisely. <laughs> yeah, time. It's a funny concept, time. Science fiction writers were always into it. People travelling from different dimensions, different worlds. Yeah, anybody believe in the existence of extraterrestrials living among us here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, guy, with, guy, guy with a luminous eye. So what <laughs> oh, it's a pretty fair concept, yeah, that they are living among us. Why haven't they shown themselves as sceptics? Uh, well, obviously, they're, they're waiting for just, uh, just the right time. Yeah, when the Earth's pollution threshold, just goes over the brink. Then they'll show themselves with a stern warning. <laughs> what are you staring at, that kid? to use my native tongue. <laughs> I was traveling in deep space <laughs> when I received your faint distress signal. Neighbors, Everybody needs good neighbors with a little understanding. <laughs> I, a 
I'm from the intergalactic green party. Yes. Your planet Earth's polar ice caps are melting rapidly. And your ocean levels will rise by 37 feet for an a quarter inch. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, by next Thursday afternoon, all those of you who like to go to the seaside will have the seaside coming to you. <laughs> Now I must transform back into my earthly alias. Do I can find the bloody thing? Nearly, uh, nearly didn't make it at all tonight here. No. I've just survived the, the country's most horrendous, horrendous practical joke. Yeah. The Crafton factory? No. No, oh, the M25 motorway. Oh, God. I mean, the wagons. Oh, the wagons on it. Those huge trucks. Well, it's not so much the truck as a deranged homicidal maniac driving the damn thing. You've seen him, you know what I'm talking about. Old cholesterol brain. <laughs> He's the one that gives all the other truck drivers a, a bad name. You know, good buddies, there's no greater feeling of power than sitting high up in a cab, looking down on everybody, driving 80 tons along at 70 miles an hour. Creating a 250-foot wake at back of me in torrential rain. <laughs> Blocking out every buggy's vision. <laughs> well, you've got to keep up momentum, haven't you, good buddies? Otherwise, you've got to keep changing bloody gear all day. 156-inch waist. 21-inch biceps, 19-inch neck. 2-inch head. Rolls a condom on it when it's raining. Any of the truck, it doesn't drive you mental. Well, it's the lane closures, it must be. And the cones and the contraflows, you know yourself. You've been on it there, you're travelling around. Travelling down there. Everything's okay, fine, you know. No rush. 90. <laughs> then suddenly all the brake lights slam on in front of you. All the winkers start going. <laughs> Cars start driving from lane to lane. <laughs> and, you're going, and then everybody starts slowing down to a snail's pace. And you're going, what the hell's going on? What the bloody hell's going on here? Some of us are going to get to work tomorrow, you know? What the hell's going on? Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> you, you see it, not the blockage, but you see a sign telling you which lane's blocked. More often than not, it's the fast overtaking lane, right? The third lane that's blocked. So when you see it's blocked, you get out of it. Then you get in the middle lane and queue up like a good citizen should. Yeah. You only go slow in this lane. It's a bit boring, so you wind your wind today. Oh! <laughs> you end up with a Grace Jones you never ordered. As Mr. Mean goes flying down the outside. And isn't it always a Ford Sierra? <laughs> Driven by an XR four eyed rep. Q <laughs> 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 for every second. <laughs> Straight down the extreme right. As he starts getting near to the cones at the other end, he starts running out of room, right? He starts flapping a bit now, puts his left indicator on and starts trying to sneak in at the last minute after everyone else has queued up. 
Yeah, and all the moderate middle of the road people are sat there in the middle lane. Yeah. And the Morris Minor Travelers. <laughs> and the Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> and you can barely get a razor blade between each bumper because they're all driving tight formation. And you can still see Mr. Mean in the corner of your eye, frantically winking to get back in. And it's a nice feeling. <laughs> You're not getting in now, Paul. <laughs> no way. Stay there and rot. <laughs> 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 anyway, I can't let you in because I've not seen you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm Mr. Mean by this time. Still trying to get back in. And his left wing's just coming over to your right wing. It's just going to be a paint job. And he goes, <laughs> May I? Squeeze a little one in, can we? <laughs> now, this is the point where being an impressionist comes in handy, because you can wind your window down and go, Excuse me for saying so, <laughs> Mr. Travelling Salesperson, but why don't you do everybody a favour and have a nice head-on collision with a motorway bridge, you bastard? <laughs> Right. Farty with smarty bottom net. <laughs> Have a plezzy for the Sierra. <laughs> Thank you. A little bit of a little bit of music now, I think. Why not? Yeah, to finish off with. <sighs> Stupid thing. Many myself out of a court anger. Kortanga! <laughs> you couldn't give a shit, could you? <laughs> Last time I did that, I had three St. John's ambulances guys up here. You couldn't give a chance. He's dying. <laughs> Bit of Dylan. As your biscuit breaks and drops in your coffee, Floats for a while and then sinks But you can't retrieve it Until you have finished But then it's too late Cause it's disintegrated <laughs> John Cole sings time Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Maybe not. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, just before I sneak away, uh, just a couple of words on the environment. It's knackered. <laughs> yeah, and I was up, I was up Cumbria not long ago. There's a lot of, lot of talk about coastal pollution, you know. And I was up Cumbria, and I, and the uh, the co- the sea around the coast of Cumbria is very, very clean up there. Should be, there's enough bloody detergent in it. <laughs> but here's a, here's a song about coastal pollution. There's a ship lies floating in the harbor. My name is Roger, but I must be frank And say, should we carry on like this much longer? This ocean's gonna be a septic tank Oh, I would like to be beside the seaside If it were not for all the effluence That once was beautiful now we're killing birds and seals with the oil that oils our wheels and the whole thing never seems to make much sense. Ah. There's love letters drifting round the shoreline. <laughs> and so I thought I'd write this little point. For I am beautiful And like me you will start crying When you see before you dying The oily boy who never catch the wine <laughs> Sick but true, eh? Cheers. Here we go. Ah, oh, glass dropper. <laughs> been a great audience. Thanks for coming along. Wouldn't have been the same without you. myself fart, you know. (laughs) 
Nice to be here. See, I've just been practicing a scene from my new film. What's it called, Bill? If you must know, Alligator Glasgow. <laughs> In the acid house of doom. See, I've always wanted to be in the movies and that, you know, since I was a wee bam, hi, with my mum, hi. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> but see, it's always been difficult for me, you know, hi. See, I've never, never been one to sort of like, uh, see, it's, uh, you get my drift here or what? Hey, huh? you. Who, me? Yeah, you, John. Either get to the point or piss off back to Scotland. I recognize that voice there. That's right, she answered. <laughs> See, this here is what's known as a self-censoring device. My manager says I've got to take it with me on all occasions, on account of me doing so much fucking work. <laughs> Seems like there's a slight delay on the fucker. <laughs> Still, I'd like to say, since I went to all the trouble of getting bandy and lively together, thanks a lot, fans, for buying my fucking record. <laughs> Still, who knows? Maybe I, maybe if I'd sort of stuck to my Irish roots, I might have got to number one <laughs> with some Gaelic number. Come on, come on, that crap's not gonna get me in the charts. Who do you think I am, Val Dunica? Come on, get your fingers out now. Mushroom at the death. Looks like the fucking batteries have conked out.
mixed falling over. Come on, you're not very sympathetic. Mick's falling over. Mick, 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 you, you're falling over. Yeah, I, I think I've fallen over. Well, you, you seem a bit like burnt out tonight. Yeah, that's because I'm burnt out. Is there, well, is there anything we can do to like get you going a bit, get you on your feet and up? Yeah, get me some women. Can't say get me some women. Why not? But it, it's sexist, isn't it? Sexist? Sexist? What, what's that mean, sexist? Well, it's just like ideologically unsound nowadays. You, you kind of go saying, get me some women. Ow, oh, yes, I can. What am I supposed to say then? You'd have to say, get me some persons. All right, get me some persons then. Make sure there's a few women among them. Right on. I'll see if I can find a little one for Bill Wyman as well, sir. Right, what we're going to do now, we ex... Forget it, man. Chicks will be queuing up after this. <laughs> Sing a song. It's not a bad thing to sing a song. Uh, come on, Michael, put a bit of spunk into it. Not literally, of course. Uh,
<laughs> Hi, Corbis. I just come up from down under. Heck of a long way to swim. <laughs> and the water temperature is enough to freeze the gulagongs of a brass wallaby. <laughs> and I'm here to promote my new album. It's called Lullabies for Wallabies. And the first track is a sort of favourite of mine. It was me wobble boy. Here we go. <laughs> Come on, lads. Sort of give us some of that Aboriginal soft music. Warriors both of course Then one a little chap He had a mishap He broke off his horse's head Then he wept for his toy And his tears turned to joy As his little playmate said Did the guy would leave you cry on my post for two I'm up here again We'll see me quiet I can go just this fun With two When we grow up in the boat We soldiers And our horses Would not be toys And maybe Oh, you won't remember serious part of the song. Can't you see, Joe, I'm all a tremble. Perhaps it's the battle's noise. Or maybe it's because I remember when we were two little boys.